Hey everyone, my name is Carter, the host and moderator for today's topic, which is the deep, we will be, we'll be talk, discussing and talking and have a dialogue session with Vincent Lai, who ADEX have invited to on decompression diving. So today's May topic, May, the 5th, 5th of May, the May topic will be talking, we'll be talking about decompression diving. And I'm very glad and, and happy that um, Vincent Lai, that we, that ADEX invited could actually be talking and sharing more in depth about decompression diving and why is it important not to be in deco diving. Okay, so today I have Vincent, who is a recreation instructor and also a technical instructor, and he runs Scuba Attitude, uh, Attitude in Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, and um, he he teach he teaches uh, he. he Besides teaching technical and recreational diving, he works in a hyperbaric cham chamber in Phuket and has commercial related work in the Tabala, Tabala Lab. Dam. Am I correct? Did I pronounce tabella. it correctly? Yeah. It's so, Tabella. <laughs> tabella Dam. Yeah. Okay. And also, uh, Vincent, thanks for your time tonight and today to share more about decompression diving and why is it important to know about decompression diving and at the same time, not to go into deco dive. Um, I would like to hand the floor over to you. Vincent, please. Yep, thank you very much. So uh, my name is Vincent, uh, I'm Malaysian, but um, I used to work in Phuket for quite a while. So my background would be, I'm an, actually a recreational instructor trainer, and also I do tech, um, I also teach technical diving. So it's very relevant to decompression dives. And also to help further help me to understand this kind of uh, related um, topics, um, I also work in chambers. So chamber is the ultimate is the ultimate treatment for decompression sickness, which is also very relevant to our topic today. Because if we violate certain things in our topic, then that would be um, where we will end up, which we obviously don't want to. So. Um, that will be it for my personal introduction. And also, and now we'll just go very quickly through uh, a slide that um, I've prepared for everyone about our talk. So the slide's on. And our talk, there will be, the session will be, go into three parts. The first one would be a general understanding of what is the compression diving. And second one, to make you to make you understand is that um, the equipment and skills required to do a proper decompression dives. And the third one would be what is the learning pathway into the co-diving? Great, great, Vincent. That yep. sounds exciting, the three topics. And just now Vincent, Vincent mentioned something that uh, that he do not want to see it, though he worked in a hyperbaric chamber, I don't think he would like to see divers there that process going through that process yes yeah, definitely so, not yeah so vincent uh without further ado i think um you can switch on your slide to share more in depth about the three points that you have just mentioned yep so okay all right cool here we go so in a, in a very basic sense um i realized that divers look at the compression diving or they link it straight away to technical diving it's they only see what we look like it's um, a lot of tanks and it's a lot of um it looks very busy and also they understand that we go deep and everything but actually to look at it in a more simple way we are not that different from recreational diving in terms of we are not thrill seekers we actually don't push our limit in what people think so to put it in a very simple way we look at what is the compression dive we first need to look at what is deco dive and to put it in a very simple way deco dives is just mm, basically I realize that divers that look at the compression diving the or the link decompression limit the technical dive is what your watch is tell you and the rest about more tanks and going really deep and everything those are circumstantial necessities we just need to do it and we you'll learn a little bit more about why later so first of all, we just talk about what is NDL. NDL, in a very simple way, is a limit 
that has been experimented by US Navy to tell us that, oh, you are absorbing nitrogen underwater. And the deeper you go, you're absorbing more. So there will be a limit where your body can absorb and then still go up to the surface being decompressed and doesn't need to bear a penalty. So we'll talk about the penalty a little bit later. But basically, we used to use tables. And I believe you're still learning it in your party, in your SSI courses, where the tables are so-called the older methods to use it. And why is it called the older method? Because what we have now are the computers. So that computer will trace how deep we go and trace how much we're absorbing at a time. So they give us a time limit right there. And the time limit is to tell you that, okay, so you cannot stay here over the time so that the nitrogen bubble wouldn't over expand as to say. So the question here would be, what if you go past that time? And I've heard stories about, oh, people go past their time and then there's been something that you show on the computer and say you must do certain things. So what is that certain thing? That certain thing would be what you call a compulsory deco stop. So be very clear what is the difference between the deco stop and the safety stop is that safety stop are highly recommended, but you won't get penalized for missing it. I'm not saying you should miss it, but you, will get, you won't get penalized for missing it. And what is the penalizing uh, means? I'll cover it a little bit further. But in case you run out of uh, your NDL, your no decompression limit underwater, and then you come back up to the shallow, they will actually tempt you to do a specific stop at a specific depth for a specific time. And to put it in a very simple way, that shouldn't be violated. You will have to adhere. And if you don't adhere the time, a very key problem would be, you, um, if you miss it, you need to be treated as a potential decompression sickness patient. It means that it will assume you will have decompression sickness, your computer will lock down, uh, you can't even use it uh, for 24 hours, and even further, depending on the computer, and that's, that's, a, uh, that's not what we want. So the question is, why then? we apply a stricter rule to deco. People say, people could say, oh, I have a very good air consumption and I can, I can handle it and it's okay. I just stop since my dive time is, my stop time is almost the same as a safety stop. But the thing is we are putting ourselves into a condition where we will be forced underwater and we are not prepared for it. And what do you mean by not prepared for it? Because an unplanned decompression stop, when you don't have the proper setup for it, can be risky. And what are the risks as to say? So the risk could be, first, you don't have the proper air, amount of air to run the stops. And imagine if you are on a, a force stop or compulsory stop, you don't have the enough air to do it, but you cannot go up to the surface. You are stuck between a rock and a hard place. That's very, very risky. And second thing is that to do prolonged stop, a lot of times you need to be hovering in the blue and also you, you actually cannot um, control your depth as well because when you have deco stops, you really need to be at that certain depth and the allowance of up down is 0 0.3 meters only. Means if your force stop is at six meters, you shouldn't be going further up than 5.7, you shouldn't be going further down at 6.3. So um, recursion divers that, I would say, um, do recursion divers usually adhere to depth limits that strictly, not really. So you might find yourself being forced into a very difficult situation in to something that you are not trained in skills and also in understanding to do. So, yeah. so, so, so Vincent, so, yeah. so that's, that's, that's very good uh, in depth sharing. So mm. I believe uh, previously in one of the slides, you mentioned that not only the multiple tanks that benefits the deco stop for, for divers who have been practicing for the deeper diving for for decompression diving especially. Yep, but right. when you mentioned about equipments, 
can I can I can I share maybe it's a uh, a sausage that can let you like like what you mentioned 0 0.3 and 0 0.3 that margin mm -hmm. it's a very challenging margin yes I mean 0 0.3 is not a lot <laughs> yeah that's not that's definitely not a lot <laughs> your buoyancy must be really tip top so yeah. maybe a I, I believe the, the decompression divers usually carry a sausage for them to hang on it yep. so that they it, it reduce to even 0 0.1 i would say that but you need to see at a different case if you have a sausage and um, it definitely helps but you need to see and another thing is that your oh, boat, oh boy yeah uh we use actually a sausage but the thing is your boat is not prepared for your prolonged stop oh that's it's, um, okay and also the boat assume that you'll be up within three minutes or let's say five minutes on a normal safety stop. If you have a prolonged eco stop, if you are in the drift and the boat haven't been prepared, you're putting the boat in a very difficult situation also. There might be other divers they are waiting for. If it's rain, it started raining or it starts getting choppy, they are risking not picking up other divers just to prioritize you if you are drifting up. And you are not coming up in 15 minutes, let's say if your deco stop is long, then the you you are the boat risk losing other divers. So this is why telling the boat and telling the, the operators a deep our dive plan is very important also because this helps them to control the group. And an unplanned deco stop makes a group uncontrollable because it's not in the plan. Yeah, to put it in a way. Very, very good sharing. Uh, I think I think be responsible for for not only yourself but yes, definitely when you're going out, especially in the context of group diving. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a very good very good point. Very good point. Please continue. Yeah, and to put it in a way, you are also putting your body in a very difficult situation because they can go out if they don't run into deco, they can go out. You run into deco, and they know you're running out of air. They might be put in a very difficult situation. Maybe they need to share with you. In that sense. And these are all the things that you have seen or heard, uh, but never really, uh, never really put into context in this way. So now if you put it in the context, it's a one big picture. So this is why when we do, when we talk about we plan a deco stop, it's not just bringing more tanks, it's not just bringing more equipment looking cooler underwater. It's from head to toe, from operator to a body to a diver personally, to, uh, to agree on a plan and to work on the plan and to work on any contingency plans that come afterwards. So it becomes a very specific kind of planning that really requires a lot of attention of all parties, as you say. So what we do is, let's say if we are on air, we, are, we have nitrogen in the body. And what we do, if we go up to do our deco stop, and if it's still on air, you have more nitrogen in the bloodstream because you're breathing in also equal amount of nitrogen. So that's what we do to shorten the decompression time is what we call accelerated deco. It's basically to add, use a higher percentage of oxygen in, in, the, in the air tank so that you can actually um, shorten the time of deco stops. And this is why we bring different mix of gases underwater. And this is why we call accelerated deco because you need two tanks, which is usually air, that you go to the bottom since you can't use nitrox at depth. And then when you come back up, you switch nitrox at an allowable depth. So this requires proper planning, proper backup plan and everything. So we even do plans for a lost nitrox gas, for instance. So let's go into what are the rules or what are the special, as to say, consideration we take when we dive a uh, deco dive, means we have a decompression stop. So first, we instead of using a 50 bar rule, which a lot of people use and also misunderstood, um, we use a rule of third. It means that during our dive, we always start, um, we always start coming up or turning back at one third. And the other third is for the ascent. And if we need to switch gas, we switch, uh, switch gas. So we, if you have a deco stop, you can never use 50 bar because if you reach 50 bar, you start ascending, you're in deco, you might use more than that. So you need a rule of third. And then you have equipment, you have always backups. Even now when I'm teaching um, recreational dives, 
I have a backup mask. Uh, it comes from that background. Then it also makes me feel very safe that if my student have a broken strap or something, I have an extra. So we also bring certain redundancies. Um, definitely dive knife is out of the question to help prevent entanglement. And also we have torches. We bring that torch. And definitely an SMB is also out of the question. And in proper deco dives, we might bring two color. We bring the orange one to show that there's no problem. And then we will bring a yellow one for emergency, which will communicate prior to the boat to say, this is an emergency. And usually we'll attach a, a slate or we'll attach something written on the, on the yellow one so that they can pick it up and then have a look at what is the emergency. So that's redundancy. And contingency will always have a backup plan. Um, I, I always write my plans at two places, in the slate and also on hand slate. Uh, in terms of I know how long I will I need to do the stop. So all the stops are pre-planned. We never do it on the flight and say, ah, I'll go to 25 meters and I die for 15 minutes and see how long my deco will be. No, there, will, uh, there are softwares to help for this. And there are also plans we'll write down. Let's say if I lose my high percentage oxygen tank, if I need a back gas, all my bottom gas to breathe, how much air would it take? And all this will go into calculation. And that's why we are always um, preparing enough air for all these contingencies. And also if, uh, emergency management, we also talk to the boat. If I cannot go into the, the calm spot and I get washed out by current, my deco will be how long, how long, how long? So they will actually start planning and start looking for your boy, your sausage, when you start doing your deco. Because this is when we put up our boat. Let's say our bottom time is 20 meters, uh, sorry, 20 minutes. Then we actually start putting our boy around that time because when we finish our deco stop, it will be about 45, 50 minutes. Imagine how far you will drift. And you can't really swim. You need to maintain your depth during your deco stop. So they actually need to follow our sausage out if we drift out. So we are talking about the third one is interdependency. So the mentality of a deco diver would be, I'm self-reliant. I'm self-reliant to a point that the team can also depend on me to know what to do. So first is self-reliability. You need to rely, be able to rely on yourself. And then on the other side, the team would be working on the mentality that everyone is self-reliant. So everyone is on the same understanding. So when a problem arises, they know that um, to what extent the, the person will be able to help themselves first and they know when to step in. So it's a very clear kind of teamwork and also rapport and chemistry that happens. It's right. um, yeah. Very good sharing. I think I think I think the self rely I think all, all these rules of deco diving uh, that mm -hmm. Vincent had shared earlier, um, especially on self-reliance, it's about the mentality of Firstly, the responsibility, and secondly, of all the important teamwork that uh, that everyone have to go through, and lastly, mm -hmm. having the mentality of trying not going, trying not to bring the diver who is in uh deco, deco diving to in in the end end up in a hyperbaric chamber. Am yes, I definitely. Because 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 if you're not self reliant, then when you depend on team reliance with reliability then the team will just act on the team behalf and pull you out of water without knowing that you are you are still able to be self-reliable reliable yeah yeah i think uh vincent i think we are halfway marked so probably yeah. we need to go into the next section soon yeah yep yeah. so now we just um in a very simple way we we will know that why any dives different than 40 meters tend to be deco dives because there's no ndl deeper than 40 meters it runs out very quickly so we also know that why we bring multi-cylinders and we know we need proper training to execute that level of control. So now we'll look at, this is a very typical deco dive profile. So basically always go deep first and then we do a deco dive and try to make your recreation dive almost the same. Always leave the deepest part first so that it's actually safer. So the next one we'll talk about is equipment and skill for decompression diving. So now you know you need more tanks and you'll realize if you try to clip an extra tank on a, on a jacket, it will not be very neat. It will swing all around. 
So this is why generally there's two main setups for deconvection diving. First is a wing, uh, where you usually use twin sets on it with, because you need more air, you need to have two tanks for the bottom gas. And the second one would be side mount. So it's vital for you to train yourself in how to do it properly, which we'll cover in the next section. But don't get me wrong, just learning it or just buying the equipment and dive in it, um, it will be very obvious underwater. People will know straight away. Because the requirement and the skill level, even to dive this kind of setup in a recreational setup without any deco tanks, not doing deco, requires a type of awareness that people have never come across in recreational diving on a single tank which is um, host management and also tank management. Um, in, in this kind of setup, regardless of twin set or side mount, you always use a long hose and a short hose. So a long hose can really entangle if you didn't and also didn't stow it properly. So this requires extra training. And for a twin set, to dive a twin set in recreational diving even is possible is that you need to learn how to handle the box beside the tank. And the side mount is a little bit even further because twin sets, the tank sets nicely behind you. Side mount, the tank is you clip on. So a lot of consideration need to go into first to make sure that the tank sticks nicely to your body. And second, it's not shooting up because it's going to affect your buoyancy big time. So it's a process of muscle memory learning and also multitasking. Otherwise, you will see this situation underwater, which you can see in the photo. And that, even you are not a diver, I think you can assume doesn't look very good. For some reason, aesthetically, it doesn't look very good. So what you want to do is to look like this underwater. So if you put keep the tank nicely next to your body, it also allows more tank to be clipped on and also you are in trim. This is what we call a trim. When you're diving in a, a perfect angle, you actually um, you actually decrease a lot of drag underwater, and this is why I think a lot of starter divers actually start getting into problem in current because they are have a lot of drag. They can't go into trim. And secondly, because you see the you see the equipment is already a lot of things on us. So we, we cater to the idea of being streamlined. Means that we want to keep everything as close to us. There's no things hanging around. You'll see everything will be in a pocket or stowed away properly. So when you have the trim and you have a streamlined ideology, uh, so-called mentality, you'll be in control. Then the next will become to maintaining that trim and streamline all the time. This is what you do in learning um, learning side mount courses and also doing the twin sets and eventually also in the deco related courses or you can call it technical courses so have like like i say you always have this um, you need to practice your mind to be quite ocd with your gear because it definitely will affect you if you don't keep it that way um so it's um it's aesthetically pleasing but most importantly in practicality it's safe Okay, so this would be the general idea of the equipment and skills. There will be a little bit more in terms of redundancy. Like I say, we always bring masks. In certain situations, we also bring extra torch. And also we have two SMBs, for instance. All this would go into discussions when we are in the course itself. So the third would be what is the practical learning pathway into deco because now that i give you the don't do it don't do it thing i of course need to tell you how to do it and how to do it properly because i believe all of us have heard stories about people go deep and survive it not even survive it be very proud about it and say since i can go down to a certain depth let's say more than 40 meters on a single tank why do i need to burden myself with so much thing and everything. So you learn also why we need to. They are all precautionary. And now you can see a very practical pathway on how you pick certain skills up and in the end put it all together 
and then you go into deco diving itself. So what we'll start is these are all recreational courses. So to go into deco dives, first of all, you are going to use a higher percentage of oxygen in the tank. And it correlates with what you learn in nitrox. In fact, nitrox actually come from technical diving. Now it's been recreationalized. Not even sure that's a proper word, but it's been recreationalized. So what you learn in nitrox, set a very good precursor into technical diving itself so that you know you don't only need to, uh, you, not that you only worry about the NDL, you also worry about the oxygen in terms of the depth control and everything that relates to it. So this is the oxygen part. And the other end, since deco dives always go deeper, usually goes deeper, you need to know your capability and you need to learn the relevant skill in that. And I didn't, um, when I say that, I mean you need to be able to dive to 40 meters. You need to see how, how could you manage to, to operate at that, that capacity in terms of you don't get narcosis or even if you get narcosis, how do you prevent that? And also in deep diving, that's a very good point. What we learned in deep diving itself is that we are also bringing a redundant tank already. So you actually will be using something spare and you understand the calculation and the redundancy that will come in deco diving. So you put nitrox together with deep diving, you get a, uh, a diver that has done this too, you get a very good understanding, a diver that has a very good understanding of deep diving is not about going deep. It's about how to plan to go deep and also to understand the safety margins when you go deep. And in nitrox, you also learn about how to control your depth and also reaping the benefit of more oxygen. Now you need to also cater to the thoughts that it might affect your maximum depth. You cannot go as deep. So how do you put these two together? It's then it's exactly what we are doing in deco diving. So besides that is about the absolute um, prerequisites you need to do to go into deco diving, proper deco diving. These are what we would suggest. So you, from the left, you see extended range foundation. Extended range foundation actually could be done in pool or actually it's done in pool or confined water. It's basically teaching you how to use a queen set setup. Or you actually you can use do side mount also, but basically it's to teach you how to do the technical related skills. So things like uh, when you need to train to use a longer hose, how to store it properly. And also we will do some, um, um, uh, we will mock um, deco stops. Means that now you assume you have a third tank and then how do you switch the gas in the pool? And what is very useful on the other side is also recreational side mount. So I, for me, I let my students use um, recreational side mount as, um, as a tryout to let them know if they can uh, accept the so-called ex extra awareness needed in technical diving. Because Simon basically is tank management. You learn to how manage two tanks. You learn that the tank will move away if you don't clip it correctly. And you need to adjust the tanks in accordance of what height it is when the buoyancy decreases, means your tank gets empty. And you cannot breathe fully breathe one tank empty first and another tank is still full. You need to alternate. So all this gives it a very good understanding in terms of you have multiple regulators and you have a longer tank and all your tanks need to be managed time to time underwater. So it, it creates an understanding. And I think this is the most beneficial cost for people that wants to go into deco diving because it's exactly the same mindset and the same skill set. So, We've talked about the prerequisites and what we suggest you take before, then we now go into the courses itself. So acceleration nitrox is basically going to 40 meters and you use 50% oxygen for deco, not underwater, because it definitely cannot go so deep on 50% oxygen. So what you do is you'll be learning to dive to the depth, exactly the same depth as deep diving, which is 40. 
but we will do a mock decode. Means that we'll write up the plan and without going into real decode itself, we will simulate uh, an ascent that ends up with decode, decompression stops. And you actually really switch the tank into the 50% oxygen. And um, usually what I will do is to combine extended, uh, I will actually combine extended nitrox into one full course instead of breaking it down to a 40 meter and 45 meter course. After the student is certified and they are comfortable, I actually do a five day course that um, that actually includes both extended range nitrox and also extended range. So it means that you do a five day course, you don't need to do the extended range nitrox part because it's included. And you go five days, which is about one day in the pool and four days out in the sea. And you do an extensive training progressively. So the first two days, you'll be actually on 50% O2. And the last two days out in the sea, you actually then switch to 100% O2 for deco. So it's actually exactly the same thing. And I find it more practical. So these are the courses. And then go further out then you have even deeper courses where you have technical extended range, which is actually 50 to 60 meters. And, and then you start using trimix in technical extended range, which is um, you're adding a third type of gas in your tank that already is out of the narrative for today. And then the last um, course in terms of that related and deco related actually is hypoxic trimix. Uh, after you learn this course, there's basically no uh, limitation certif certification wise, there's no limit that limitation anymore. Your limitation will come at how could you handle the external tanks and the increased tanks as you go deeper. So it already have gives you a very good understanding of um, your limit. And the final cost hypothesis premise actually is how you practice that understanding of the limit. So you don't you know when to push it and you know when not to push it, as to say. Very, very yep. good sharing, yep. Vincent. Very, very good sharing. I think I think the most the most fundamental takeaway for tonight uh, after Vincent sharing is that mm. you shouldn't be diving anywhere more than 40 meters with just 21% oxygen and a single tank without getting properly trained. I'm not saying that you, sh you, 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 you shouldn't, but you don't do it because um, it's pretty dangerous. You can, you can, you, that, I believe there are recreational divers that push their limits more than 40, 40 meters, but you can be lucky once, twice, but you might not be always lucky. The, the hyperbaric chamber will be waiting for you every time you push your limit. Right, Vincent? I think the time is up, but do you agree with what I say? Yes, definitely, definitely. Stay to your limit and you know that there's always a pathway to go up and then there's a proper pathway that is um, is accepted by insurance, is accepted by the general dive community and is understood as it has been experimented and understood by, by divers. So instead of going into it without understanding it, why don't you train yourself up and, and do it? Because you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be um, scared by the, the, the extra tanks and everything. If you've already done that dive and you're already you already pushed that limit, I would say that would be the scary thing, not the skills that come with proper decompression diving. Yeah, I think one final question, Vincent, hmm. is there any uh, minimum dive in recreational before they take on this path of, uh, can you reverse two sites, two to three sites uh, where it's 40 to 45? Uh, mm, uh, yeah, one more slide before. So is there any minimum dive for them to, no, one, one more slide later after this, um, uh, as in, yes, this one. So is there any minimum dive for you to recommend them, recommend them before they actually take on and embark the journey of twin set, side bound, and, and further after all these courses that you have introduced? Um, if we really want to look into these questions, actually there are, there are more recreational courses that we, we can recommend. Like you, you having, a buoyancy certified course as a you get certified for buoyancy like in a perfect buoyancy is what SSI call it um, will definitely help for all this because uh, there's never really a fixed amount of that you need to do to go through all this but having more experience in general getting trained in more courses in general will help 
great. so great. yeah great 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 sharing vincent i i mean i i'm so sorry i need to cut cut you yeah. off uh is sorry. there any last uh last uh important message that you want to deliver to our audiences um so i would say it's a privilege um to have me so um to have me to share something that is uh, less mainstream as to say um, that decompression diving is i would say not recommended for for decompression uh, non-trained divers but um the non-mainstream part is that i would recommend people to go to do it in actuality by getting trained properly so Good that would be my message um just dive safe and keep keep yourself keep updating yourself because there's always more things to learn and if you if you keep on one level then eventually you might get complacent and why not keep also motivated by keep on diving and also keep on learning yeah so thank, thank you for you. having me again thank you vincent thank you yeah. for for your time tonight uh today and i hope to see you in person soon and as as you know uh, the world is opening up and yes FedEx is definitely. starting its physical show soon yes so uh sure. keep 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 in line like uh, go visit our website adex.asia to see what's our latest uh updates on adex and vincent if you're free come and visit us adex physically and then probably we can oh. catch up personally and have a chat over over drinks definitely so i'll be seeing you and also be seeing all of you guys yes thank yeah. you vincent thanks for your time tonight okay thank you very much guys bye bye